just think about Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice. Those girls, Jane couldn't inherit her father's estate. Why? Because it was entailed to Mr. Collins, that awful Mr. Collins. Because a woman did not have any possessions. She could not own even the clothes she was wearing. But in the Viking world, it was very different. It was Christianity that did away with it, again. If she was the eldest of a family of girls, she could inherit. If Jane had been a Viking girl, she would have inherited her father's estate. She would have to have a male guardian who would look after, make sure she was okay, possibly an uncle or a good friend of the family, rather like a godfather, I suppose. She had limited property rights. Once widowed, she was able to make all her own decisions. And women were very few their marriages didn't last terribly long because husbands were doing dangerous things. They were at sea a lot of the time. They were fighting or whatever. So the woman very often would be widowed. There's an amazing story about one woman. She married three times. And on her deathbed, her children said, which of your husbands did you love the most? And her reply was very enigmatic. The one I treated the worst. And she treated them all very, very badly, so it's still impossible to tell which one. <laughs> she was expected to have independent thought, her own mind. She wasn't expected to go along and agree with everyone. Very strict rules about adultery, both for men and for women. And it, it was very important that, um, you know, the women had equal rights to the men on this. And in extreme cases, you could divorce your husband, he could divorce you. And there's one wonderful story in the Icelandic sagas where the woman has got just a bit tired of her husband. It's, it's not for any other reason than that. She just wants a change, I think. So she makes him a shirt and she does a slit right down the front. And um, when he puts it on, she said, I divorce you because this is something that only a gay man would wear. <laughs> <laughs> so there you are, all sorts of things going on. The Icelandic sagas are fantastic. They're not easy to read, but if you ever get a chance to, plough through them. They're wonderful. The stories in them are fantastic.